Hello everyone, welcome to Team Tiger TV. I'm Tim Lopez and I'm here with Drajan Lucier from Midlife Matter. How do you structure slash plan an interview most effectively so that you can get the best results? Typically I have a pre-interview with the guest, whether it's it might be on the phone or it might be in person you know, having lunch or something. And I draw up a discussion outline and I emphasize it's not a script. But I do try to time out because I know I have a, you know, set amount of minutes to work with, typically about 28 minutes. How much time we might spend on each topic. And this is after I've already heard their story and I try to create the story. And I typically start with what the guest is doing right now and then go back and um, ask questions about how they got to that point and decisions they made and but you know based on whatever their situation is i do ask some standard questions at the end i ask for a favorite quote or saying yeah. i typically ask them advice they'd give their younger selves so i go in and just on my computer and i pull up a previous outline mm -hmm. and i just erase the whole top part of it but i keep the bottom so i pretty much have been doing it enough now that I, um, the format works for me very well. And I just try to make sure I get in the outline the, the important thing I think that um, really helped shape the woman's story. You've been doing this for seven years, right? A little bit more actually. I think my, I think I first filmed at the end of 10 years ago and then in 2013 was the first time it aired. And then I've had a couple of years pretty much off because of the pandemic. Of those 10 years-ish, yeah. Are there any topics left uncovered that you are still interested in exploring? Well, actually, I did a little review of topics that I've covered, that my guests have covered, and each person can bring their own story to the topic. So, for example, someone came and spoke about drug addiction with the family member and the community involvement. People have talked about public health, domestic violence, grieving, divorce. I mean, some very kind of dark, heavy topics, um, being or being in the military, or hobbies like climbing or photography or whatever. So I, I don't actually have in, in mind any one particular thing that I, I want to hear more about. I'm more interested in how that person views what their experience has been. You've won many awards like these, right? Yes, three, which three. is very, very exciting. And for your shows over the years, which award has meant the most to you as a contribution to the community? The first award was for the Rika Welch Community Impact Award. So this was really based on um, overall influence, you know, with my target audience, which was very exciting. That was earlier in my period of time here with WPAA TV. This one was more recent. It was the child sex trafficking topic, which is very difficult, but very important for people to be aware of because, for example, almost half of girls who are being trafficked live at home. Their families don't know what's going on. So that's very frightening. So that was a woman from the state of Connecticut. And the award that's not here, which was a second place, and so it wasn't on a plaque, was really the interview that I was felt most privileged to conduct, which was survivor of the Holocaust. Right. So here's this 90-something-year-old woman who very eloquently gives talks, like 7,000 students have heard it or whatever, about her experience of one day living in Czechoslovakia and things are normal, and then without firing a shot, the Nazis moved in and she lost most of her family and wow. she was in three concentration camps and she really survived because she knew so many languages. They used her as like a work leader with girls that would come, other prisoners that would come with from different countries. It was just the most compelling story and she was just such a delightful, positive person. And I think because that's been some time ago now, um, that probably has the greatest impact on our culture and our community because younger people, maybe such as yourself, wouldn't know anybody who knew anything about that or hear a lot about it at school or whatever. Right. So we have to keep those stories alive. Okay. So her name's Judith Altman. How has your family and community contributed to the success of your show? Well, my husband's here tonight, so he's been a great um, assist with just helping me remember things, and I do really value his opinion on things, so it's nice to have someone who's been with me through the whole time and just not having to do it all solo, so that's that's great. 
And in terms of the community, it's really, you know, WPA TV has its own community, so it's been nice to be affiliated with people on the board and the different events that they've had, and just, it's nice to be part of something. And again, I didn't necessarily know how many years I might be doing this or what shape the TV program might take, but it's been a very rewarding experience. Thank you everyone for watching. This has been Team Tigers TV.